Okay, another really cool stop here at Death Valley National Park. This one is a natural bridge canyon. And you can see behind me here, this fantastic sort of arch of stone right above this canyon. Um, natural bridges are different than arches. Uh, maybe you've been to the P Arches National Park or seen something like that in Southern Utah. We have this arch of stone. Fundamentally, it's the same sort of shape of rock, uh, but there's an inherent difference in the names we use between the two. Uh, natural bridges always span some sort of uh, water course. So in this case, the natural bridge is uh, over the top of this valley, the stream that comes through here when they have flash floods. And so it's classified as a natural bridge rather than an arch, which is a freestanding arch structure independent of any sort of water body. So this thing actually has a really interesting history. Uh, we look at the walls over here and we can see that it's dominated by gravels and sands. These are flood deposits that have come down the canyon over in the past and uh, plugged up the canyon at times. And then eventually bigger floods come that actually scour out the canyon. If we look over here to uh, my left over here on this side of the bridge, we get a little sense in exactly how this thing might have formed. You can see that there's an embayment cut over there. And so the interpretation would be at one point this stream that came down here with floods would have had a little curve in it right here and gone around that protrusion that's just up there. Uh, pretty dramatic feature. We'll actually walk up here underneath it so you get a little sense of its scale and size. Again, you can see the, the meander over here where the water's cut through. This, of course, is a feature that probably won't last too long geologically, but probably will stick around for a few hundreds of years, I would guess. So there's the view, kind of looking back down the canyon, and you can actually see uh, out through the valley there, across the Badwater Basin, to some of the alluvial slopes coming off the Panamint Range uh, to the west. Uh, so another fantastic little hike, little, little scenic uh, landscape feature here in Death Valley. So enjoy. So I've hiked up about a quarter mile past the natural bridge that I showcased in another video. Uh, we're still in the same canyon. And what we found here was something that characterizes a lot of the faulting and the extension that's gone on here in Death Valley National Park. And as we've hiked up this canyon, it's mainly been in these these kind of gravel, these old alluvial fan deposits, just gravels and sands all kind of mixed together. But as you look behind me here, you can see that the bedrock starts to show up in the canyon and the characteristic of the canyon changes, uh, gets a little bit harder to walk up. Before we had this nice sandy uh, gravel kind of path to kind of walk up. And now it looks like the going gets a little bit trickier with some dry falls and some obstacles to deal with. And the reason that there's this abrupt change here is of course geologic. And we can actually see the change between these two if we look at the walls of the canyon over here. So if you look over here, what we actually have here is a fault surface. Death Valley has been formed by faulting, extensional faulting over the last uh, 15, but especially in the last six or so million years. And what you can see here, we'll walk over here a little closer, um, are these rocks here. And these are actually metamorphic rocks kind of greenish marbles uh, and some other metamorphic rocks. And then sitting above them are the gra alluvial gravels that we've been hiking through. So this line right here where my hand's running through the rock, this is the fault surface. This is the fault surface where these rocks have been pushed up relative to these rocks which have slid down over time. And I'll, I'll take you over to a little uh, drawing that I put together that'll hopefully explain it a little bit better. These low angle faults are normal faults, so they're caused by extension. This side's moved up relative to this side which is slid down. And these low angle normal faults are, are what we call detachment faults. And because of the in intense amounts of extension that's gone on here in the crust in Death Valley, these have moved blocks of rock literally tens of miles in some places. So it's an incredible amount of extension that's thinned the Earth's crust, that's dropped the valleys down like to such a point that it's below sea level, out like out in the Badwater Basin below us, and then simultaneously pushed up these big lofty mountains. So this detachment fault here, you can actually trace it all the way up the cliff face there, all the way up to the horizon, and then you can actually see it coming back down 
on the other side of the canyon over here. Uh, so pretty remarkable feature here. And if I can help explain this a little bit with this drawing, the idea here is we start out with the Earth's crust being extended, being stretched in this case in an east-west direction. Rocks have brittle characteristics, so at some point as they're being pulled apart, they break, and the breakage is what uh, what forms these faults, these detachment faults. And over time, as the extension continues, the fault continues to push up these old ancient metamorphic rocks uh, from below, what we call the basement rocks, and then slide down these younger rocks such that they're right next to each other. And again, that's exactly what we have here in this canyon is the juxtaposition or the placing next to each other of these ancient metamorphic rocks, you know, one, one, one to 1 1.8 billion years old, right up next to these fairly young, maybe within the last few thousands of years, gravel and sand deposits uh, from the flash floods and the shedding off of the sediment as the Black Mountains rose. So again, detachment faults here at Death Valley National Park. Another great location here at Death Valley. This is um, just a little ways off of Artist Drive, which is a one-way kind of scenic loop uh, that winds through the area just south of Furnace Creek. And on the drive, I noticed a spectacular uh, exposure of a fault. And so I thought I'd come up here and, and show everyone a little bit closer look at what faults look like when they're really fresh. And so if you look behind me, there's this, this very polished, sheer cliff that's kind of streaked in red a little bit uh, and if we could get over there a little bit closer which is a little bit tricky given the terrain um, it's incredibly polished in fact from some places on the road it was kind of reflecting the light a little bit so that face has been completely polished by the movement along this fault and as you kind of look down this way you can actually sort of see the fault uh, breaking through the rocks over there that that prominent crack running through the rocks on that side uh, is the same fault surface here. Now these fault surfaces, when they're exposed like this and they're polished, we sometimes call these slick insides. And what we often see is when the fault moves, the, the friction and the grinding action of the two sides of the fault actually polishes the face of the rock. It can grind up the rocks a little bit as well, but what it'll typically leave are sort of grooves or scratch marks or striations on the fault surface that indicate which way the fault moved. Now it's subtle here, uh, but hopefully you can just make out on those red patches behind me that there's sort of a, 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 a line or a set of lines going across that face kind of down and to the left. So what that indicates is that this fault, when it last moved, moved a little bit up and down, but it had a lot of sideways motion as well. So those lines there show us which way the fault moved during the last earthquake. So a very nice, large, maybe about a 50 foot tall fault plain exposed here at the north end of the Black Mountains uh, just near Furnace Creek. Pretty spectacular.